my father thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit thank you thank you Jesus for what you've done all what you did for us we appreciate you from our hearts thank you thank you because Lord what you did shall be implemented in the lives of men this morning shall be fulfilled in someone experience this morning blessed be your holy name in the precious name of Jesus Christ hallelujah may I take your seat thank you Jesus Jesus Christ is here. He's here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning we look at. You see, I see, I see, I see great things happening here. This moment was just packaged for you. See Jesus. Thank you. I want us to look at 10 reasons why Jesus Christ will heal you. Why he will touch you. So just maybe a few reasons. Number one, Jesus heals because he's full of compassion. A leper came to Jesus, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. See Jesus' response when the man came and met him. And Jesus, the Bible says, was moved with compassion and put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him I will be thou clean verse 41 so it was the compassion that led to the miracle Jesus still heals people today by his spirit because he's a compassionate God our God is a God that is full of compassion we have a high priest that is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. What you are going through, the pain you are going through, he's also going through it. We have a high priest is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Touched, sad. Shares your pain. Shares your pain. And because of that, he has compassion. His compassion is extended to his touch. Never think that you are going through that problem alone. Never think that your family is going through that issue alone. Shares it. 
the burden with you. Psalm 145 from verse 8 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. So many people say, full of compassion. To us who? To us who? To us who? He said he was moved with compassion. So he is predisposed in making sure that you will be healed. There are many things that could be healed in one's life. Your spirit could be healed. We are people who are broken spirits. He's concerned and is compassionate. Your heart could be hurting. Maybe you've gone through some such situations in your life. Or probably you've been traumatized from disease, sickness, or relationships, or failure, or disappointments. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Maybe there are people, you know, been trusting God for a particular thing and your hope has been raised and somehow it seems as if you never get there. Your goal now becomes a mirage. Makes the heart sick. It causes depression. A lot of people are depressed because of their financial state who are dissatisfied with life Jesus is also able to heal this the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to declare liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison doors to them that are bound to declare the acceptable year of our Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So that they can be called the planting of the Lord. Trees of righteousness so that his name may be glorified is concerned maybe you are here completely torn and confused because of the way that life has treated you disappointed by your parents disappointed by your husband let down by your family members stabbed behind by your friends and you find it so difficult to trust people there's a case many years ago you some of you know about it it was in the news a father was sleeping with his daughter and she committed four abortions for him how do you think that kind of person will recover from that it became a huge scandal within the family torn apart maybe you are here carrying those wounds inflicted by people who should love you people you trusted businessmen you trusted business partners some of us are carrying hurts bitterness because of such issues our God is also able not only to cure you of the physical ailments also of the emotional wounds most of us are carrying wounded people wound others bitter people make others bitter are you bitter 
Is everyone complaining about you? Maybe you need healing from Jesus this morning. And he will heal you. If you are the one that God is talking about, please receive it and say amen to that. Yeah. He is the balm of Gilead. He heals the broken hearted. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. Some of us have grown up not to trust people. Some of us have grown up and looking for pathways to satisfy or to soothe that. People have entered into stuff just to deal with that in their lives. Pornography, masturbation, sexual immorality, all these things could result or could be resultant consequences of these things inside. But this morning, Jesus Christ is in the house. See him just touching you and healing you in the precious name of Jesus. Some of us, because of the trauma, we can't sleep well. Anxiety always sweating fear gluttony eat too much just eating this eating that eating that it could be a sign that something is happening in the inside of you as you are trying to find a solution to Jesus Christ is here it's compassionate see him so you open your heart to him touching you beyond your expectations hallelujah 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 and today indeed is the day of God's judgment the day of God's vengeance upon the issues that have afflicted you in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, if you had one that God is talking about, please help me see a very big hearing. If you had the one that God is reaching out to right now, help me see a very big hearing. Hallelujah. Some of us will drop those loads before you leave this place. Oh my God. Some of us will have to unbundle. Hallelujah. 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 You have to drop those garbage in the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Praise to the name of the Lord. He's the one that also heals your land. If my people are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways. You know, seek my face, come from the wicked and pray unto me. He says, I will hear them. Not only that, I say, I will heal their land. So your land can also be healed. The land of your finances can be healed. The land of your marriages can be healed. Hallelujah. The waters can be healed. Barrenness can be healed. One of the first, the first um, word, not the first time the Bible, you know, um, that you see the word healed was in relation to Abimelech. When his womb, I mean, the, uh, um, his, um, his wives and the maids, their wombs were shut up. The Bible says that Abraham prayed for Abimelech. And then God brought healing. God healed them. So maybe you are barren. It could be an academic barrenness, mental barrenness, 
intellectual barrenness, physical barrenness, financial barrenness. That healing power, when it hits you today, your condition will change. If you are the one that God is talking about, please help me say a very big amen. Why would Jesus heal? Why? What are the reasons, the purpose? Jesus heals for the purpose of glory. Some people said, me say glory. To convey or to attract glory to God. Every time there's a healing, glory goes to God. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 30 to 31. On the side of a mountain near the Sea of Galilee, the Bible says, great multitudes came unto him and he healed them. And the multitude wondered when they saw the thumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and also the blind see. The Bible says, and they glorified the God of Israel. God loves taking the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 9 verse 8. Matthew 9 verse 8. This was another occasion again. We saw something similar. We saw the response. When Jesus healed a paralytic man, it says, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Hallelujah. So, when you are healed, glory goes to God. God cannot eat rice. God doesn't eat beans. What God loves most is glory. And he's always looking for opportunities so that his name will be glorified. The reason why Jesus Christ will heal someone here today is because God is determined to take the glory. And when God demands it, it must be given to him. I see your situation bringing glory to God. If you are the one that God is speaking about, please help me say a very big amen. amen. If you are the one that God is talking about, help me say a very big amen. amen. No wonder why he says that whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. He loves to take the glory. He loves it. Some people like chicken swear. Some people love beef. Some people love fish. Some people can't do without every weekend without buying swear. I had a pastor, I have a pastor friend of mine like that. Every time we jam at swear spot in the evening. So I told him when I saw him, say every time you come here, sometimes he comes here with his family and his wife and his children. I said, do you know I can set a trap for you here and I will catch you? And he looked at me too and said, you too, what are you doing here? I can also set a trap for you. With God, it's like that. He loves it. When he perceives the smell of glory, he loves it. Every other thing you can take every other thing. God can share anything with you. His angels. The Bible says, are angels not ministering spirits called to minister to those of us who are the heir of salvation. He shares his angels. Everyone has an angel. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ was saying, talking about the little ones, even children, that their angels are there beholding the face of the Father can share his angel. God can share heaven. The place of his abode. No wonder why he says, now I go prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. God can share everything. He can share his anointing. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the power and with the Holy Ghost went about doing good. He can share his anointing. God can share his spirit. No wonder why you have the Holy Ghost in the inside of you he can share he can share of his spirit he can divide himself and give it to you the Bible talks about the seven spirits of God that stand before the throne he's talking about the spirit of God himself now 
the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. The Lord is that spirit. So God is able to cut out of his spirit and give to you. Our God is a God that is so gracious, so liberal. God can share his planets with you. That's why you're upon the earth. The gold and the silver, you can have it. A cattle upon a thousand hills, they are his. But you can have it. The gold and the silver, they are his. You can have it. Even the black gold, the oil, the gas, crude oil, they are his. But you can take it if you want. But there is something that God would not share. And that is his glory. Listen very carefully. If you go deeper, you will see how God is so magnanimous. The most precious thing, the most precious thing that he has, most precious, most precious, his son, he gave him. God shared his son everything you can take for us to die for you but when it comes to the place of his glory oh my god don't touch it he loves it the bible says his eyes they go to and fro seeking for how opportunity for him to display his power to display his glory on behalf of those whose hearts are right with him that is your God. And your situation today, maybe you are sick in your body. Oh my God. I remember a man that Jesus Christ met. A boy. The disciple says, Master, who sinned? The boy was born blind. He was born blind. He said, who sinned? Was it this boy who was born blind or his parents? Do you know what he said? He said, no, it wasn't the boy. It was not his parent. But so that glory will be given unto God. Every bad situation in your life is an opportunity for God to take the glory. And if God would demand glory, he would take it by force. Even if he has to give you a testimony by force. I see someone here leaving this place with his testimony. I see someone here Oh my God, I say I see someone here, whether you like it or not, God is going to bless you. I see someone here, oh my King of glory, that your situation, uh, you might think that that situation is bad. That situation cannot be turned around. It's difficult, it's desperate. That situation, uh, oh King of glory, oh, oh my God, a situation that you cannot redeem, but it's an opportunity. God to take the glory. He will take the glory in your life. Thank you, King of glory. That is why he heals. That is why he heals. Thank you, my Father. Go to the third one right now. There are ten of them. But I share three with us today. Thank you. Share four. Thank you. Why would Jesus Christ heal? To draw men for salvation. He wants men to be saved. It is this goodness that draws you to him. Hallelujah. John chapter 4, 11 verse 45. The many of the Jews, when they came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. John eleven forty five. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 17 from verse 3. And this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true God 
and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. To draw men. So if you are here this morning and you are not born again, you don't know him personally, I think God is speaking to you already. You need to submit yourself to him your entire life and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. The fourth thing Jesus heals because of the atonement. He heals because of the atonement. Isaiah 54 from verse 4. This was fulfilled 20 centuries ago. It says he was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. Have you seen it there? was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The pain, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then by his stripes we were healed. He paid the price for you to be healed. He paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price. He shed his blood. Not only to forgive you of your sins, but also for the healing of your total man. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53 from verse 4 to 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we are seen him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53 from verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed shall prolong his days. Psalm 129 verse 3. 129 verse 3. It says, The plowers, the plowed upon my back, they make long their furrows. They make long their furrows. The plowers, they plowed upon my back. He went through pain. He went through pain. He paid the price. Isaiah 52 from verse 14. Isaiah 52 from verse 14. See what it says here. It says, As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so mad more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. He was so damaged beyond repairs, damaged. His visage was mad. What you saw in the um, Passion of Christ it's not a true representation. Some people watch this and they cry. No. He said it was mad, completely damaged. More than the form of any man. He paid the price. The plowers, the plowed upon my back. You know what it means. See the sacrifice he paid. Like the plowers, like the um, the caterpillars, the uh, you know this thing is used in tilling the ground, the machine. When they plow your back with with with, with hole, you know. When somebody wants to farm, you know how they do it. You have ridges and trenches. Plow. That was exactly how his back was treated. So deep, you couldn't believe it. Long. 
paid the price. No wonder why your healing is settled. No wonder why your healing is settled. You ought not to be sick. Say, is any amongst you sick? Is any? Look for someone, is any amongst you sick? It means he wasn't expecting that they'd be sick. Why? Because of their torment. He paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price. Oh my God, he, said, he paid the price. He paid the price for you to live in divine health. No wonder why it says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above all things, because he paid the ultimate plan, price. I wish above all things that I might prosper and be in health. Even as that soul prospered, he paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price. He paid the price. You couldn't pay it, but he paid it for you. Oh my God, he paid the price. He paid the price. Paid the price. Paid the price. Just as salvation is free because he paid the price, so your healing is also free. Because both of them were captured in the atonement. Which is easier, he says. Is it to tell the paralytic man, stand on your feet, pick up your bed and walk? Or to tell him that his sins be forgiven him? So that you might know that the Son of God has power to forgive sin. He told him, stand up. He stood up. Picked up his bed and walked. Because both of them captured in the atonement. I see you taking delivery of what Jesus wrought for you. I see you pressing in this morning. Why? Because it did cost him so much. Do not allow that sacrifice to be a waste. I see you in the precious name of Jesus. Is healing power touching you in the precious name of Jesus? Can somebody please me say a very big amen to that? Can somebody please me say a very big amen to that? Can somebody please me say a very big amen to that? Can somebody please me say a very big amen to that? If you are the one that God is talking about, you will stand up and shout loud as amen. I say, if you are the one that God is talking about, you will stand up and shout a very big amen. amen. Help me tell somebody, the sacrifice will not be a waste over your life. Oh my God, please help me tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. He paid the price. He was mutilated, damaged beyond description. So that you could receive your healing not only your salvation hallelujah maybe just one more why just one more and then we'll pray that's number what now number five so we'll call it make it 50 50 number five jesus heals to destroy the works of, of, of Satan. Oh, I can't hear somebody. Is, is someone excited about that? Thank you, King of Glory. First John chapter 3 from verse 8. Thank you. Thank you. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of Satan. Have you seen that? Why would Jesus heal you? To destroy the works of Satan. Because sickness is the work of Satan. Acts chapter 10 from verse 37 to 38. See what it says here. 
know how Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He was healing all. Ill health is an oppression of Satan. One of the things that Jesus Christ came to do is to destroy the power of Satan over your life in the precious name of Jesus. Maybe you are here, for example, and you don't even know the cause of your disease. It happened many times here. And just feel, you know, you've checked everywhere, you cannot see it. It's not, it's not something that could be treated. It could be demonic. Remember the woman who was bent over for 18 years. The Bible says that she had the spirit of infirmity. It's a spirit of infirmity. As soon as he spoke to the spirit, spoke to her, be loose from this infirmity. Immediately, she could stand straight. But for 18 years, she went to so many doctors, they couldn't find a cure. Gave her all the drugs. Probably they said it was arthritis or something. She was going like this for 18 years. Not knowing that it was the spirit of infirmity. Another word for infirmity is disease, weaknesses. See God in the precious name of Jesus. Bringing healing to someone here this morning. Is somebody ready to receive? Hallelujah. Our God is the master healer. One of his covenant names is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals you. Or the Lord, your physician. It's an expert. An expert. You can set your bones. It's an expert. It's an oncologist. You can cure you of cancer. Or tumor or growth in your bodies. It's a hematologist. The disease of the blood is an expert. Is the Lord thy physician? The consultant of all consultants. That is him. I said, That is him. Oh my God, I said, That is him. 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 An orthopedic surgeon. Treat your bones. We had a case here, one of us, for many years, could not sleep on the floor. She was standing there. Healing service like this. The power of God came upon her. God rearranged her bone. People sitting by her, even her, said she heard the sound cracking. That is what it does. It's an expert, it's a cardiologist. If you have a disease of the heart, come and ask me your pastor when my heart was not functioning well. They told me, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened to you in five years, six years. I met one of the best consultants in Nigeria, written many books. Not only that, the country honored him for his exploit in the area of medicine and gave him a national award. He was my doctor checks the ECG. I'm also in the medical field. I saw it myself. It was rough. When doctors will carry your report and begin to, and you're asking, and they don't see anything, and then they take it and begin to look at it, and then say, okay, please just wait for me for one minute. You, you, you understand what I mean? Oh, you understand what I mean? This heart stopped beating twice today I'm alive they told me I had bradycardia 
a disease of an unknown origin. I never knew that God was using this to bring me into the healing ministry. The very thing that Satan wanted to use to kill me is the same that God is using me right now to be an agent of blessing. God also can turn your situation around. I say God also can turn your situation around. I say God also can turn your situation around. That same thing that the enemy is using to afflict you, God will turn it around. You now use it to begin to afflict him in the precious name of Jesus. If you are the one that God is talking about, let me hear you say a very big amen. Oh, let me hear you say a very big amen. Your God is an expert. Oh, nephrologist. He takes care of the kidney problems. We have one of our sisters. Today you can see she's dancing and he said her kidney was packing up. Kidney packed up. Quickly went to the hospital. What do you mean your kidney is packing up? Lay that on her and say, Holy Spirit, please come. I beg you, please come, Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ paid the price. You ought to be well. Kidney failure? No. Today you see her jumping and dancing. Since that time to today, not one dialysis anymore. That is your God. That is what your God can do. I said, that is what your God can do. He's an expert urologist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nephrologist. Hallelujah. That is the God you serve. I said, that is the God you serve. Can somebody please help me say a very big amen? Can somebody please help me? Oh my God. Help me shout a big hallelujah. 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 That is your God. Who is your God? Is the greatest physician. Help me shout a big hallelujah. That is the God that you serve. That is the God that you serve. That is the God you serve. Your God is the psychiatrist of all psychiatrists. I am the Lord that he led thee. One of our sisters says she's here. I can't forget that testimony in a hurry. We're in a church like this, healing service like this. I said, her brother or her uncle, something just happened. He was attacked and he lost his mental dignity. Went away from the house, just from all over the place. They couldn't find him. Saw him in the city, just walking up and down. Brought him to the house. Service like this. Service was going on. Took the phone. Said, call. Tell them to put a phone. So you can hear this from here. In the east. The word of God is so powerful. I said, the word of God is so powerful. He said, he sent forth his word. And then healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. The word of God was sent from this altar. There. From the phone. Instantly. His mental dignity was restored. Listen, Mike. From that time to today. When they shared the testimony. How many years now? It has never returned. Why? Because your God is an expert. There is no psychiatric case you take to him. He cannot heal. He is the Lord your physician. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Let somebody shout the loudest 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 hallelujah. Hey! Listen very carefully. Uh, one of the, what God has done is also an optometrist or an oculist. Saw the testimony of one of us a couple of weeks ago. A pilot flying international now. A sling had been put on his 
career, I could not move forward because I could not see some certain colors. But in service like this, simple, Holy Spirit come, please. The power of God was moving. After service, he met me and told me about a simple problem. Let's pray again. And he went for the first interview. Every testimony here. All of a sudden, you could see. When he got to the country abroad, he had to subject him again to a stricter examination. I'm just showing some of our people this morning. Test results. Yesterday, this morning, pass, pass, pass. Because of what God can do. He paid the price. He said to me, when he sent the text, he said, I'm cleared for life. God is bringing clearance to someone here this morning. If you are the one that God is talking about, say it's me. Where is that man, that woman, who is captured in the plan of God? Let him say it's me. Let her say it's me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, just two things I will share with us and then we'll pray. Now just say, Holy Spirit, come. Please just move. Then you check. And that condition will be reversed. Not tomorrow, but right here in this service. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Number one, things you must do. It's so important to give your life to Christ. It makes it even much more easier for you because healing is the children's bread. It comes to you first as a child of God. Before God will give any unbeliever where touch it, it is you first. You first. Not only that, when you are born again, there is a factor that you carry in the inside of you that makes it easy for healing to take place in your body. Because there are many streams of healing through the world, Holy Communion, laying of hands, worship, and others, anointing oil, many. But one that is very sure, it is through the Spirit of God that is in a believer's life. If you don't have Jesus, or have not accepted him as Lord and personal Savior, you don't have his spirit in you. The spirit of Christ does not reside in you. Now, see what the word of God says. It says, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Jesus shall by that same spirit that is in you quicken your mortal bodies. So it means that your heart, your lungs, your blood can be quickened. But God requires something. And that is His Spirit. A deposit of His Spirit. And that comes when you give your life to Christ. You understand what I'm saying this morning? How many of us understand this? Thank you, Jesus. Number two. What do I need to do? Before we pray this morning. And we allow Jesus Christ to move. Tell someone, say, come with faith. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, that is faith. So she went and touched because she knew she was going to be healed. That is faith. 
Is that me say faith? Help me say faith. Matthew 9, 27 to 30. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on me, on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Do you believe? Do you believe in the finished work of the cross? Do you believe? Some of us, we have a wrong theology. It was the enemy. We exposed ourselves to wrong churches. They've told you that the sickness that you are carrying, that you are paying for your sin. Or they said, no, God just wants to teach you lessons of life. It is not true. People have said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them. If you check very well, the word affliction used in that context is the trial, the persecutions of the righteous. Not God afflicting your body with disease. Jesus Christ is the express image of God. He's the express image of God. Oh my God. The Bible talks about him and says, He's the express image of the Father. And we saw what Jesus was doing. Even he himself said, The things that I do is the Father that dwells in me that dwells them. Again, he said, He who has seen the Son has seen the Father. Not once I saw Jesus putting diseases on people even people that were even outside of the covenant it heals them it shows you the mind of God concerning your state hallelujah how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with power with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good good it is a good thing for you to be healed God cannot use and say no I want to teach you a lesson of life so put sickness no it's a wrong theology Many churches preach this is wrong. It's not true. It's not. I see the mind of God fulfilled in your life this morning. If you are the one that God is talking about, please let me say a very big amen very quickly. Oh my God, help me say very quickly. Let me say amen. Help me say amen. Help me say amen. The third thing, so you must believe. The third thing is that unconfessed and unrepented sin and block the healing flow. Isaiah 15 from verse 2 it says, Behold, the Lord's hands is not shortened. Isaiah 59 verse 2 Psalm 66 from verse 18 If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. He will not hear me. Verily he has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God. Who has not turned his mess, nor my prayers away from him. That is the God that you serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if there are unrepented sin in your life, that's the thing that you have to do this morning. Simple. If you're having anything against anyone, or you've not forgiven them, release them. It's in releasing them that you find your own release. Hallelujah. How many of us are ready for the touch of the master now? How many of us are ready for the touch of the master? How many of us? God is going to take glory in one, someone's life here this morning. God is going to destroy the works of the darkness of the enemy in someone's life this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. The power in their torment uh, shall be realized in someone's experience this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Are you ready? Are you ready? Is someone ready this morning? Are you ready this morning? Are you ready this morning? Are you ready this morning? Is someone ready to connect with the power of God? Are you ready to connect to the great physician? Is someone ready for the touch of Jesus? It will happen here, not later. Now. Is someone ready? Say, I believe. Say, I believe. Go again, say, I believe. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. Say, thank you, Jesus, for all what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Now, just stand up and just speak to God very quickly. Wherever you are, just stand. Wherever you are, stand. 
Wherever you are, just stand. Now, talk to God right now. Is there anything that is in your life? Is there an unrepented sin or unconfessed? Go ahead and confess this to him and say, Lord, please have mercy. And for those who are watching us live, same thing too. Go ahead and just confess. Because Jesus Christ will touch you this morning. Today, even this moment, in the precious name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. Just talk to him. The Bible says, if we confess our sins unto him, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just speak to him and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I did this, that, and that, and that. Please, Lord, forgive me. Go ahead and just speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to him. Let somebody pray. Let somebody pray. Let somebody pray this morning. Let somebody pray this morning. Go ahead and speak with him. Thank him, Lord. Let healing come. In every aspect of my life, I receive healing. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. 